this is Ken with another tutorial for my Civil War engine game. In this tutorial I wanted to demonstrate how to set up and play an email game. So first thing I'll execute my game and get it up on the screen. And since this is a new game we'll start. It'll ask us if it's a play by email game. You'll say yes. It'll want a name for it, my new game, say OK, I'm going to do Antietam, it has one scenario in it, which is the battle, the game will come up, showing the upper left hand corner of the map. If you jump over to a different area like Nicodemus Hill, you'll notice that you don't see anything. That's because I haven't selected which side I am. Since it's a new game and I'm going to start as a Union player, I'll click on the Union flag there. You'll ask me for a password. I'll put in USA in lowercase so I don't forget what I did. I'll say OK on that. It'll ask me if I'm ready to enter commands for the US player and I'll say yes. And it comes up and it shows me some of the Union troops. They're mostly on the north woods and scattered about, but let's go down to the east wood where we have 6 Pennsylvania. We'll use them for this little demonstration. And we want to send them through the cornfield, so we'll shift them a little bit to the right and march them on down. You'll notice there are two hexes colored in with a green bar showing they are in line, and it's an extended line, so the regiment occupies actually two hexes. Just march them a little ways and say, that's enough. Then I'll come up here. This is the start in the end order entry, since I'm already in orders as indicated by the two Union flags. I'll be ending it, so it'll ask me to confirm that I'm ending my command phase. I'll say yes. It'll change to a furled flag in this box. Unfurled flag, rather. That indicates the Union player has entered his orders for this turn. There's no Confederate flag because the Confederate player hasn't. So first thing I got to do is email that file, the game file, to my opponent. So I'll exit the game, come down here and in the save folder of the game folder, wherever you placed it, you'll see my new game dot bin file. That's the file you have to email to your opponent. Let's pretend we went through the trouble of emailing it and my, I'm there, the opponent. And I've received this email and I save it into my save folder. So I'm ready to execute the game again. This time though, I'll do open since I received the file. It'll ask me if it's a bin file or a save file. I know it's a bin file. All play-by-mail files are bin files, so I'll say yes. It'll show me my file I just stored in that save. I'll select it. It'll load it. Now it's loaded. It shows me the Union player has put his orders in. No player has been selected to be active. Since I'm the Confederate, since I know it's the Union, I'll put in a password of CSA. Say OK, and it'll ask me if I want to enter my commands. I'll say yes. And let's go over, let's see, to about the center of the battlefield. There are my Confederates. Take a look around. I see a few Union up here, and that's about it. They're aimed at the 31st Georgia. Not much I want to do there. I'll just uh, kind of wait for them. But uh, since they might hit my flank, I think, on the 31st Georgia, I'll extend that line. 
the three hexes instead of just two. And let's go back here to 60th Georgia. Let's kind of move them up so they can give us some support on that flank. And that's all I'm going to do to make this quick. Go up here to my orders button. Say yes. And that completed the Confederate turn. There I see both flags unfurled, so I know orders have been entered for both sides. This game is a we go system where both sides enter the orders, then the execute button lights up saying I can go ahead and run the turn. So everything seems to be ready. I'll go ahead and run the turn. Got a little progress bar down here that's showing it going through. The turn is actually represents 10 minutes. Each pulse in it, 6 seconds. 31st Georgia has extended its line. 60th Georgia is starting to move up on his flank to support him. Since I'm the Confederate, the only thing I still see is this one little regiment, and it's moving towards me. <laughs> As it gets closer, it looks a little stronger. It looks like I might think there's a battery over here, but that's almost for sure a misinterpretation. That's part of the fog of war of this game. My view may get a little better, but I'm still probably too far. The cornfield blocks most of the view of that regiment. And as I say, it's a we go system, so there we both entered orders. I've executed the turn, so the first turn is complete. There it's going to go back to waiting for new orders. And that's one of the advantages of the we go system is. I executed the entered orders, executed my turn, and there I can click my, well, I didn't need to click my flag. I can click the uh, order entry, and it'll say, are you ready to enter orders? I can go ahead and enter orders for my next turn. Since I've got somebody out here advancing on me, let's take the 31st Georgia and give him a left turn order changes facing so he's pointed that way. Likewise, 30th Georgia, let's give him a left turn order too. Notice how turns are made in this game. They hinge around the left or right most part of the unit. Don't plan to do anything else. I don't know where the rest of the Union is, so I've got to be careful. So let's go ahead, complete our orders. Now we see a Confederate flag unfurled in the order section, so it's indicating all the orders for the Confederates have been made, but no orders have been made for the Union. So let's exit. Now there's a difference. My new game, there are two files. One is a bend file, the other is an RPY file. That's a replay file. That allows the Union player to see what just happened. We send both files to the Union player. So we'll assume we loaded these two in the email program and sent them over to our Union player. He receives them, puts both of them in the save folder overwriting the one that's already there and he executes his program does the open wants to load a bin file still sees his bin file opens it says okay it comes up again it shows no player selected 
shows a Confederate flag unfurled so the Union player knows that the Confederates have done put their orders in. Let's go over where we know there was a little activity. Since we haven't selected ourselves, we can't see anything, so we'll say Union player. There it is for a password. I'll put in my USA, say OK, say I want to enter commands. All I see is one hex I occupied by a Confederate regiment. So let's send the 6th Pennsylvania picking for orders. Let's keep advancing in, see what's going to happen. That'll be all I'm going to do. In a real game, of course, I would be moving all everybody at the same time, but this is, I need to speed this up. So we'll do our order entries in that command phase. We've got both our flags for orders, so that means I can execute it. And as I said, this is the advantage of a WeGo system. I'm really moving along very rapidly in spite of 10 minute turns. I'm going to accomplish 20 minutes of game in about the same time most other games do that don't have this system. Because I'm able to go execute, let's go ahead and execute our turn. This time we ought to see some things happening, especially as we get closer. He still hadn't been able to see, but he knows that uh, regiment down there, the Confederates, is a little bit larger, and now he realizes it's way larger than he thought. Depending on how much threat these two people see, they may start shooting and they may not, but it doesn't look like they're going to start firing. That would probably be what I'll do in the next turn. And we're up to 70% of the turn. Should finish here in just a moment. Okay, I completed my turn. There was one other thing I wanted to show, and there you can see a whole lot of troops. He knows he's in trouble. Both flags are feraled, so I know no orders have been put in. I can go ahead and do those orders. Now I can pick this unit. Pick him for orders. And by holding down the control key, I can turn this into crosshairs and I can tell him, let's shoot at somebody. And that will complete all the orders we're going to do for this. I've got my Union flag, so I know I need the Confederates to make their turn. So I need to send the file again to them, so we'll exit. Again, when we go back here, we'll see we've got two files, just like we received, except they've been updated for this turn. Those two files for the new my new game will, will be emailed to my Confederate opponent. Confederate opponent will receive them, save them into here. And I wanted to show one more thing, since I've really demonstrated all you have to go through to do your email. But there was one thing I also wanted to show, and it'll show a little better in this. Let's go get our game file, open it. As before, it shows the Union player has made his move, but we haven't made ours. So let's do ours. We want to enter commands. We'll go over. Well, we see that somebody's marched down there, but we didn't see what happened in between. He was way up here, and now he's way down there. So what happened? Well, that's what that replay file is for. And this button became active. The replay display of last turn. I can press that. 
say yes I want to resee it then we are here we see our movements that we made but we also seeing the union players and what he did this gives you a way to review the different sections of the battlefield now since there's so much activity in this game I don't jump around to each move as it does it every especially since it's happening every six seconds you have to move to the part of the field you want to take a look at and do the replay on it if you want to see what's going there are other ways also to see what happened let's wait till it finishes the replay though don't want to get too many things going on at the same time it is an alpha program and it will crash at times hopefully not often but that's why I'm trying to get people to play it so they can spot these there's no way I can try every possible thing that can be done in this game well, we finished our replay we could do another replay shift over to a different section of the battlefield see if anything was going on over here but I wanted to show the log file it would have shown any combat going on which there wasn't any of so it just has the end of turn if I did one more turn you'd see some combat let's do it just for fun before we quit we're in command mode so we can pick the 31st Georgia and let's drive off this regiment especially since we have the 60th Georgia supporting we'll give him a fire order too that ought to do some damage really in that command phase we got both flags so we can execute and there you're going to see some activity from both sides then they'll reload so you'll see a pause another interesting thing to notice is each section of the regiments fired independently and they're firing a boat on a 30 second interval so in one turn of 10 minutes quite a bit of fire can be produced and there's going to be quite a bit of damage and if I were doing replay what the Union player would do when he receives this he would be seeing the same thing except from his point of view he won't see as many Confederate troops So far though, both sides have stood up well. Uh, neither one has been broken by the fire. And you might notice along here you know, there is a little running log of what's happening. You'll see the casualties from the fire popping up in there. And the turn's finished. So let's take a look at the 31st Georgia. We'll probably received the blood of all that. Hadn't been too bad. It's only two killed out of all that fire so Yankees weren't doing too good with a shooting 
60th Georgia probably didn't receive any hits because I think everything was aimed at the 31st Georgia. Anyway, that completes demonstrating it. Now that the Confederate has finished his turn, he would enter in his new orders, and then the files would be sent again, and the cycle repeated. Uh, thank you for taking viewing it. I encourage anyone to go uh, download the game. It's free. There'll be problems, of course, since it's an alpha game, but uh, you can play around with it. And I'm working on eventually coming out with an editor for it so that you can create your own battles. Uh, thank you for watching.